Previously, we built a milk crate solar power system, but today we're gonna to make a more expensive, more refined version. First, we are gonna use a Guillendil Pure Sine Wave Inverter. These cost more, but these are really nice. They have a great warranty, and I've never been able to kill one. I have about five of these, and I bought them all with my own money. Next, we're gonna upgrade the fuse box so we can have lots of 12 volt appliances. And we're gonna use high quality color coded hookup wire, and this is 10 gauge. And before we build this system and take apart this system, I've been testing this every single day. I've done one cycle every single day and it works flawlessly. And I connected the MPPT to a 400 watt array, even though the max acceptance rate is 260 watts, and it handled it like a champ. I also left this inverter on 24 hours and it worked perfectly. Never had a single issue. And this power supply is so far my favorite. I tested out some other ones and the voltage was not high enough to charge lithium iron phosphate. And I've seen lots of other people use these to charge batteries as well. So I'm gonna stick with this one. This one seems great. But this fuse block is too small and having a high quality inverter is pretty nice. Even though this one does work really well for now and it's pretty darn efficient, it's probably the weakest link in this system. And I'm not sure what the total cost of this system is, but I'll post it right now when I'm editing the video. So that's the total cost after everything's said and done with the nice components. Oh man. <laughs> Also on this new fuse box, it has its own negative bus bar. So we will only need to connect the battery to this fuse box and the new inverter and that's it. So now we have a clean slate and we can add our components. But we need to think about how the wires will flow inside of our case. And putting the battery in the same place as previously is actually a pretty good idea. But this time I want the MPPT on this side and the inverter over here. I think it will look better with the two wires from the inverter flowing out to the terminals. And then we'll have the chargers on this side so it will be nice and organized. And then the fuse box can go right on top of the battery just as before. Now I drilled two holes so I can secure the other side of this MPPT with a zip tie. And this inverter is better matched for this battery because the max output current of this battery is the max input current of this inverter. So it's nice, we got 600 watts now at the AC output. And I wanna put it right here so it has airflow on both sides of the heat sink. You don't want the inverter touching anything in your system. So I secured the back of the inverter to the crate and then I'm gonna use some small screws to secure the front of the inverter. I wanna drill a hole right here, but you need to be very careful with these metal shavings. If they go into the inverter, it can destroy it. So be very cautious when you are drilling stuff near an inverter. Now we need to add a fuse box on top of this battery. And the main negative is over here and the main positive is over here. So we wanna mount it right about here. And I'm gonna do that with some double-sided tape. Now the next step is connecting power to the inverter and the fuse box first. I'm gonna start with the inverter and it comes with some cables. So first connect these cables to the inverter. I should have done this before I attach the inverter, but oh well. Also after you install this inverter, if you already have these cables attached, these like to go loose. So after you're done mounting it, ensure that these bolts are tight. Now we need to connect these wires to the battery, but the big question is, should we add some form of overcurrent protection, such as a fuse? In this instance, because the overcurrent protection that's included in this battery is 50 amps, and the max that this will ever need is 50 amps, and this conductor can carry 50 amps and trigger the overcurrent protection of the battery, it is safe to connect this directly to the battery. If you have a sealed lead acid, that's not the case and you need to add a fuse. So first I'm gonna cut this one right here and this one right about here. This will give us a decent amount of slack if I ever wanna move this inverter somewhere else. And I'm not sure if this is 10 gauge or eight gauge. I think this is, yeah, that's eight gauge. And I have some eight gauge connectors to connect to these wires. And because these are raw lugs, we need to add our own heat shrink. Now we need to connect wires from the fuse box to these main battery terminals. And we're gonna use 10 gauge conductors. So these color coded 10 gauge automotive primary hookup wire will go from here to here. And this battery can only discharge 50 amps, but if you were to load this up with a lot of fuses, you could trip the overcurrent protection of this battery. So if you do plan to use this, ensure that your loads do not exceed the max discharge rate of this battery. And this connector fits the terminal bolt for the battery, so we're gonna use this on this wire. 
Next, we need to measure and cut where this wire should go. So right about here, we're gonna cut it. So I'm thinking right about here. And this connector will fit on the fuse block, so I'm gonna use that. Then you're gonna use a size nine socket to remove these terminal nuts. Before you add the bolts, make sure that it actually fits. And that's a perfect length for this wire. So we're gonna tighten these down now. Now that this side is done, we can work on the negative side. Now we can connect the inverter and the fuse block to the battery terminal. Now we can add the MPPT to the fuse block. And this is a 20 amp MPPT, so we need a 25 amp fuse. And I want the wires to go over here so I can tuck them away and hide them. So I'm gonna put the fuse on the bottom. And to connect this fuse block to this MPPT, I like to use 10 gauge wire just to be on the safe side. And we're gonna use these connectors to connect this wire to the fuse block. And when we connect this MPPT to the fuse block, we have a negative bus bar. So the black or the negative will connect here and they go to battery negative on the MPPT. And then the positive will go from the fuse on the 25 amp fuse over to the battery positive on the MPPT. So unscrew this, slide the connector in and then tighten it down. And that looks pretty good. I can actually tuck this wire all the way down inside of the milk crate and then secure it to the side. Now we need to connect a wire from the 25 amp fuse to the battery positive. But before we work on this, because there is a live circuit, I'm gonna disconnect this fuse and then connect the wire. And I don't like how this conductor is bending. So we're gonna actually connect it right here. If you have a tight spot like this on a fuse box, you can actually use smaller gauge wires. But for the larger ones, I'm gonna connect it in a place where it will not bend. Now it's connected over here and there's less bending, but there is a negative wire right here. So if you have a high vibration environment, you're gonna to have to mount this so it's not touching any negative wires. But I'm just gonna stick it down in here so you can't see it and then connect it at battery positive. And now we have a red light showing that there is no fuse or that it's broken. So we're going to add our fuse. Now we have power for our MPPT. If we connect the solar panel array to PV positive and PV negative, it will start charging this battery. But first we're gonna focus on connecting this power supply to the fuse block. And this power supply can output 10 amps. So we want a 12.5 amp fuse, but the best we can get is a 15 amp fuse. So I'm gonna have some wires going straight out to this thing because there's no way to really hide them. And because the current is so low, I can actually use 12 gauge wire. But I'm gonna use 10 gauge wire because I have a ton of it. And then run this wire to the power supply. Depending on how you arrange the components will determine how you run this wire. And now the power supply is connected just like the MPPT. But before we add this fuse, we're gonna connect power to the ground neutral line so that we know that the output voltage is good for this battery. And we want the output voltage to be 14.4 volts. Now on the side, you can see it's at 19.8 volts. That's incorrect. So I'm gonna lower it until we're at 14.4. Anything between 14.1 and 14.5 is good for this battery. Now that the output voltage is correct, we can add a 15 amp fuse. And we should be charging, so let's test it. And the voltage is really high, so it's not charging. I need to discharge this battery to make the charger work. I turn the inverter on and I'm gonna add a load. Now we have a 440 watt load and let's see what the charger is doing. We have 12 amps coming from this charger. So having a 15 amp fuse is actually perfect. So right now we're powering the inverters load off of the AC chargers output, but we can add some solar to this system. So let's go outside and connect this system to a solar panel array. And for me, I have multiple arrays connected to XT60 connectors. So I like to use an XT60 on the PV input. So I'm gonna add these wires and make sure that the polarity is correct, positive and negative, and go outside and connect the solar panel. And I'm actually over paneling this system. This is a 400 watt array and the max that this thing can take is 260 watts. But I like to do destructive testing just to see what will happen. And so far I have not been able to kill this rich solar MPPT. 
So it's a pretty good unit. And we're pulling 18.4 amps into the battery from the solar panel array. And the inverter cooling fans are running because this is almost at maximum output. So we have a non-combustible chemistry that can last 2,000 to 5,000 cycles. We can have a large solar panel array connected 24 hours a day. We can run this inverter all the time. I have lived off of Guillendale inverters. I had mine run 24 seven when I had the Tesla battery pack, when I had my first lithium iron phosphate cell packs, and they are solid inverters. And typically a cheap inverter is the fault point of most solar power systems. In this instance, I think because we use high quality components, the first thing to fail would be this power supply. So far it's been working great, but I have not tested it for multiple years. And right now it's really sunny. We've got full sunshine. Last time there was a lot of clouds in the sky. But yeah, we're hitting maximum output with this controller. If you were to charge with the AC charger and the MPPT, you could push 32 amps into this battery and it can handle that. The max charge rate of this battery is 50 amps. So you could charge this in less than two hours if you have both combined sources. 409 watts. You could actually charge this in like an hour and 20 minutes. So a very powerful system that you can depend on for years. And this is all you need for this system, but if you want to know the state of charge of the battery, I would add a Victron shunt. Those cost $130 for their new smart one, but it's really nice. If you wanna see the state of charge of your battery, I would stick with that. And I'm gonna leave this connected to the solar panel array for a few weeks, just to ensure that everything's working perfectly like the last milk crate system. But I don't see anything failing here. This is a really nice system. So I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you later. I have a budget build milk crate system coming in a few weeks, but I don't have the cells yet. We're gonna build a battery from scratch. Next, I'm actually gonna tear this battery apart and see what's inside. Um, I'm really curious to see what cells they're using and such. So I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you later. Bye.